Hi guys, welcome back to Allotment Diggers. Well, we've done it again. We managed to mess the video up. So here I am, late on in the evening. It's the 22nd of October 2023 for you time travellers. Time now is coming up to 10 to 5 in the evening. I haven't put the video together yet. The reason why is because I did the video earlier on. I know you can see from that way down. <laughs> so hopefully you can see, see me in the video. Um, yeah, we just arrived on here. It's been a hell of a week this week. Uh, the the car failed its MOT, by the way. It goes in for the repairs tomorrow, and then obviously I get me um, I get me MOT certificate. It's um, going to cost me six hundred quid that, and uh, yeah, absolute unbelievable what the, what the, where the the damage has been done. It's underneath the car. Now I have replaced shocks, springs, coils, disc brakes, brakes, bearings in all the wheels. Uh, I did that two years ago. Today, two bear, two springs cracked. Um, the um, one of the shocks has got a crack in it, and there's a there's a load of other faults on it as well, and it's all underneath the car. Now what makes it worse is where I live. Um, whichever direction I, I go out uh, for the house I have to go over loads of speed bumps there's bloody speed bumps everywhere and I must have to go over them whichever way I go before I get past the speed bumps I must have to go over 20 of them and then I have to come back there's another 20 and I do that around 10 times a day so you're talking um, what about 280 times a day I'm going over these bumps and you do that over over the over the 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 the, the month the year it's you're going over thousands and thousands of these bumps and it wears the the underneath of the car um, it, it buggers it up and that's what's happened it's brand new brand new um, brand new parts that are broke under the the pressure and I don't drive like an idiot um, you know I, I try and the tires as well something they said the tyres have passed, but there's a bit of wear on them, so on the, uh, on the inside, and that's kind of driving between the, rather than driving one wheel on these sleeping policemen, I'm driving between them, and it's scuffing the inside of the wheels and causing damage. And said, that's what you why uh, we we suggest in a few months time you you put some uh, put two new wheels on the front. Well, I've already put four wheels on it this year and already. On, on all the tires so all the wheels have got four new tires and yeah so it's uh it's in for the repairs tomorrow i'll get me me um i'll get me um mot and i'll be a very happy man i've got me insurance uh tax all that's all been paid um so uh nearly nearly um, didn't have a video uh, to oh, didn't have the internet to, to post this video up it's it's back up and running now i'm, I'm with virgin i have the fastest speeds virgin and i had my phone with them as well it went down a few days ago it's back up they give me a brand new box so it's all up and running so at least i'll be able to upload me my video at speed tonight touch wood i won't mind but as soon as that went down as soon as they fixed that the sky box um the card inside it's fried so i'm waiting for a, a card now to put in the box so i've got no i've got no sky movies or i've got no sports i'm spitting oh, i'm i'm so angry i i had to miss the um i had to miss united last night i couldn't watch them and uh, i was on the phone screaming at him i said you promised me the card would be here today and it hasn't turned up so they go oh well we'll give you compensation so how can you compensate me for me missing um, the match fortunately for them the actual United United won 2-1 but that's that's besides the point um, I was really really angry and anyway so they said it will be here tomorrow so hopefully it'll be all back up and running tomorrow along with the car as well but um, yeah what a week that's that, that Storm Barber or Berber whatever it bloody call what a name to call a Storm can't you just call it Fred or something if, it, if you're going to pick a letter out of the alphabet, Bert, Bob, Burner, you know, Burbert. I don't, is that a name? I don't know. Probably some American name or something like that, or Australian, I don't know. Is it a bloke's name or a girl's name? I've got no idea. 
Anyway, I do know it caused a bit of problem on the allotment for me mate behind me. I'll show you that in a bit. But this week we've been um, in the, the, the back greenhouse and we've been taking all the chilies out of them. We've cut, taken all the tops off the chilies. We stacked all the pots. I did a bit of tea, a tidying up in there. However, uh, well, we're going to show you the, the chilies now. We, there was, well, there was five, but you're going to see four varieties. Um, the, we did some Trinidad Scorp well, Trinidad Scorpion. They're like two two million on the Scoville scale. Very hot, very dangerous. And when I was doing the video and taking a, and showing you that, it, 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 the, I noticed that the, the videos the, the looked like they were grey. These things they're not the the brilliant yellow. It's just that the the camera was having difficulty focusing. I don't know why it was it not picking it up. It's picking all the other colours. It's just not the yellow. Anyway, you're going to see that. Um, we I think the other the other hot chili was um, the one you didn't see was the Scotch bonnets. However. The um, jalapenos and the um, cayenne peppers and the patio, patio sizzlers. You're going to see me taking one or two up. You'll see them all at the end of the video anyway. you see a bit of a tidy green now. So let me take you down there now and show you what we've done. Well, guys, you, you join me in um, the back green house. And what we're doing, we're harvesting the jalapenos. These are them, uh, so they ain't gonna get any bigger. Like I say, we've got frost here, and uh, what we're collect we're just collecting them all. Right, so we've got some nice jalapenos there. Now then, um, I'm gonna get just trim this out of the way. This grapevine's going to need an air cut shortly. We're coming in now and we're taking um, all these uh, peppers. Uh, I forget what they're called. Let me have a quick look. These cayenne peppers. So we're taking these out. There are my peppers, cayenne. Got another tray here. We're picking all the red ones. Then we're going to clear everything out of this greenhouse. So we've got some cayenne peppers there and uh, jalapenos. So we've got a pile of them. These are the Trinidad Scorpion. Now these are very, very hot. I need a, a different um, container to put these ones in. This set. Now some of these haven't ripened yet, so we're gonna these ones on the top. These what that one's been chewed a bit. What the hell? Them ones are Trinidad Scorpion. They're like very hot. It'll burn your bloody head off if you're not careful. Right. Anyway, stick them in with them. But these ones here, they, they've, we're going to have to leave these in because they're not ready yet. But the uh, rest of them, uh, we can get get and take them out of here. So we've uh, we've got a few chilies. I haven't been bothered with this side. I don't know what I'm going to do with these sizzlers, um, patio sizzlers. We've got a pile of them as well. What we do need to do now is get a get a bag in here and start taking all the tops off these. So we'll collect the compost and um, and then we'll, we'll basically we've got to come in here really hard. We've got to clear this place out. It's a right mess at the moment, and it's the last greenhouse that gets gets touched. But uh, yeah, so we've. Uh, Trinidad Scorpion. Only a complete idiot would eat one of them in one go. We've got a few of them.
these ones cayenne and them ones jalapeno so we've got some jalapenos cayenne peppers and um, Trinidad scorpion so for now next time you see this it'll all be clear we'll be taking everything out of it except for the the Trinidad scorpion these are doing really well in fact they, they could do with moving into the front greenhouse it'd be better off in there ripening in right I think that's a wrap so we'll be right back we'll have a recap at the front Well guys, it's very tight in here today. So what I'm doing, um, taking all the tops off the the chilies. Got a bag at the side. I mean, these ones he ain't going to touch. These are the Trinidad Scorpion or Trin. Uh, we've actually got some harvest them off them, but uh, what we're doing. We're just taking the tops off. Uh, we are going to stack them and then we're going to start to clear the compost out of them shortly. But right now, it's just, a it's just stacking them and getting all the tops off. We always keep the labels because we use them for next year. I'm going to have to move the camera out of the way because I need to get in here and get all this sorted out. It's all, at the moment, it's just, yeah, in my face. Uh, I'm going to get some of these party sizzlers. They're not very big, but we'll clear these out as well. So when we come back, it should be a little bit better. So this is the, the back greenhouse now. All them pots there are all the... Uh, the bottoms of the chilies. We will be going through the roots with them uh, shortly. We've cleared all these off here. This is me going to be my workbench. I'd probably end up putting plants on here, overwintering them in the greenhouse. But uh, these are my potato where I chip my potatoes. These are my trays. They're my egg cartons that I use. The this will probably go over my dahlias when I take the tops off them as well. But there's still a lot of cleaning up to do in here. But we will be back to do it. Anyway, I'll come and collect them in a minute. I'm going to take that uh, bag of weed up to the front of the plot and um, get it sh get it shifted. Well, guys, uh, these are the last of the chili peppers, patio sizzlers, jalapenos. Um, these ones are cayenne peppers. These ones are um, Trinidad scorpion. There they are. They will burn your gob, but they will make you very poorly if you were to eat that raw. <laughs> it's, it's, 
a finger a fingernail of it is is bad enough. Can probably make twenty gallons of salsa. But uh, yeah, these are the last of the chili peppers. So I'm gonna get them off home now. These are get get she got told about these to be very careful when she goes to eat them. But the rest of them are not too bad. So. Yeah, we've got a nice selection of uh, chilies there. All the chilies, bar, bar and the um, jalapenos, have all gone. My mates come down. Oh, I'm gonna take these uh, these hot chilies off your mark. Well, I ain't gonna eat them. I did that once. Once was enough. Um, what they do? They'll be in the pub tonight, and they'll all be going. I bet you can't bite that. And there'll be some crazy bugger. I'll eat it, and then be suffering for the rest of the week uh, with uh, bad guts. But uh, yeah, so I give them to my mates. They, well, a couple of my mates turned up here, so there you go, buds. Take them. The rest of them, well, they've, they've, they've been liquid, liquidized, um, they've been chopped up, and the jalapenos, they went straight away. They went into some stir fry that they was eating. Um, so everything in the that back greenhouse now, it's all been, it's all been harvested. I went back in there the next day and I decided to take all the roots out of the them pots which we had the chilies growing in. I removed the separate the soil and the roots from the soil. I kept the soil. You're going to see me doing a bit of that now, so let me show you. We, sh we actually tidied the greenhouse up a bit. Hi right, guys, well, let's excuse the mess. What we're doing today, we're separating all these um, pots. We've got, we're going to be cleaning these eventually. What I'm doing them. Um, breaking all of the compost really I should do it in a I've got a, a bag here so what I'm doing um, basically getting all the soil out of these definitely don't want to throw this soil away or this compost I should say what we do we get the roots this is a root system off of chilli peppers um, we tip them in a bag. Uh, what I'll do is I'm just going to quickly take my ring off and I'll take this watch off as well. Might as well get them covered in muck. Just remember to put them in my, in my pockets. That's what I need to do. But yeah, we're... Uh, like I say, we're getting all the roots out. Saving the compost. We'll have some um, fertilisers to this. And uh, we'll use it again. I say I use never fr never throw it away and I always after I've used it I throw it into my beds anyway so yeah we'll end up with a couple of uh, couple of bags of compost from this and um, at the moment I, I think I've got about 50 pots to do and I've only done three so that's what we're doing I do one more. These are good. That, that's a good root system. That for them chillies. That's what you want. Do one more. I say we're just shaking all the compost out of it. This is clover, by the way. Well, understand why I want to save it. There we go. Another one, and uh, yeah, we we'll keep doing this until it's all done. Oh my god! When I'm finished, I won't be able to move my fingers for a week. There you go, beautiful clean roots. Um, hopefully you can see the bag just down the side here this is where we're putting them I've got a load of uh, these um, compost bags underneath the table here I never throw my compost bags away because when I finish growing I put the compost back into these bags for the time being. Oh, we've got some nice compost there. Like I say, I've got, uh, I've got around about 50 of them to do.
this compost as well what I'll use this this stuff here what I'm shaking out now this will go into me um, into me flower uh, into the I've got a um, load of spring bulbs and I use this stuff here to top all my, my planters up and you know add a bit of a blood fishing bone at that and we're good to go right anyway I'm gonna crack on like I say I've got a pile to do um, with what we've done there so far we've only done about seven I've got another well spin the camera around there they all are there must be 50 of them and they've all got to be done right onwards and upwards well guys we're on a the third bag here of the taking the the roots out of all these um chili pots and uh well we've got, got another eight to do i thought i'd keep you know, along for a ride uh, like i say we just give them a good squeeze shake it usually does the trick There's the roots, bag at the side. Oop. Yeah, we've got a lot of bucket, a lot of pots to clean as well, but we're not doing that today. Uh, some of these uh, pots are wet, so it's a bit of a bit hard work really, and um, try to. separate the the roots because the when it when the wet it seems to stick more uh, they're not too bad this is the third bag of uh, compost we've saved See when it's dry, it crumbles away dead nice. And get hold of this stem, give it a shake. And uh, some nice compost. It's a bit damper this one. Two more. Ooh. Nice little brandle in there for fishing. It'll never get to the fishing bank though. Last one. I have got four more but uh, you've actually still got some chilies in them but I'm hoping it's going to ripen so we've uh, out of all these um, plant pots these, these plant pots here uh, we've managed to get two and a half bags of compost the compost is just down at the side of me here this is all the roots. So there's a bag of roots there. But that's the compost which we've got. And all the compost itself will be used yet again. Uh, it'll be mixed in with um, all the plant pots around the allotment, so I'll topping them all up. We'll be adding blood fish and bone, they'll probably end up in the beds as well. Um, the compost in the beds to top the beds up. I'm gonna do is wash my hands now. that one there so 
So we'll do a bit of tidying up and we'll come back straight back. Well guys, there are all the plants. Plant pots, what we emptied all the, uh, the clover out of. That's a bag of roots. We've got three bags of compost there. There's still four more pots there, so the four pots will take that to three, three full pot bags. Um, we've still got these, what they call them, Trinidad Scorpion, that's what they call Trinidad Scorpion in here. Um, we we'll left them in because they might ripen, you can see they're just starting to go yellow now. So we got them in here, we've got some ginger as well. This is all, um, well it's work in progress, we've cleared it all here. Um, there's the compost, weeds. This is going to be my workbench for, for the bit foreseeable future. I can do a bit of potting on in here. And the next job will be to sterilise all these. So it's getting a wheelbarrow full of water, some Jay's fluid, and give them all a good soaking. That's what we'll do. But uh, that's for another day. Like I say, we, we do these jobs in order. And um, I thought we'd just come in here today, have a have an easy day, and uh, deal with this. So we tidied the greenhouse up a bit more. We ended up with uh, well two and three quarters of uh, bags. When them other four pots of um, California, uh, um, whatever Scott, I forget what they are now. Them hot chili peppers. Um, when when we take the take the, the the tops off them, that soil will add into them three bags and um, we'll end up with three full bags of compost and that's what we use to fill all them pots now obviously we're not just going to tip the the, the compost into the beds um, what we're going to do we're going to add some um, fertilizers now I was in the shop this morning and I bought a load of fertilizers and I've bought some more fertilizers now I've got lots of different varieties of fertilizers but let me show you some of the fertilizers which I'm going to be mixing in that them bags with that compost so what you're looking at here guys are some fertilizers uh, two bags of grow more two bags of blood fish and bones some calcified seaweed and super phosphate they're all two and a half kilo bags of comp um, fertilizers that lot's cost me a tenner bargain that probably cost you 20 quid in the shops we're going to be using some of this to to rejuvenate that um compost from the um chili peppers um, bit bit of each of these into the into the bags, mix it all up. And then we can use the compost to top all the um, the the planters and the hanging baskets and everything up later on in the year. But yep, there go with the other uh, other fertilizers that I've got. I would imagine. So as you can see, we've got a we've got the blood fishing bowl, we've got the grow bowl, and, uh, and we've got the. Um... Um, we've got the calcified seaweed there's, there's all sorts of stuff there I've got much more in the, in the front greenhouse as well but we're going to be um, they're going to be put introducing not a lot of it but you know enough into the back to rejuvenate the soil and that way we can put it into the planters and the hanging baskets what need topping up uh, we, we'll probably um, get some buckets and we'll put some tulips and daffodils you know we, we use that soil for them as well so yeah that's that's what we're going to do uh, with that compost. Uh, the next job I'm going to show you is uh, we was actually working in the brassica cage. I decided to take everything out of the brassica cage. Now I actually thought I had club root in the bed. I was really upset about it to be quite honest with you because I was looking at the um, the Brussels sprouts and they wasn't growing very well. Um, the spinach which you don't get to see but we harvest the spinach. We took it home and we banged it up. That's all gone now but um, and we, we tidied the bed up. You're going to see me um, rate oh in it. Uh, you're going to see me adding a load of fertilizers in there. You're going to see me oh in it again, getting them all put in. I'm going to put some um, slug pellets in there. You're going to see the chickens. Can we we give the tops of the um, the the Brussels sprouts to the chickens? I'm going to show you the roots. So to prove the point that well, you're going to see that, and you're going to see the main cause of why. Um, the um, the brassicas on this side of the bed haven't done very well. I'll show you that as well. So we're going to speed it up and slow it down in parts, and uh, so you get a, an idea of what we've been doing. But at the end of it, we'll have a bed ready to rock and roll for the next lot of uh, veg what we put in there. So uh, what we got planned for today is to clear all this uh, bed out of the brassica cage right in front of me. I'm going to collect the spinach that's coming home with me. The rest of it's all going to be taken out. We're going to bag it up 
I'll probably throw throw it to the chickens, um, the good the, the good leaves, but everything's coming out. Um, with the uh, pumpkin on top of it, we're going to leave that where it is for the time being. It's starting, to, it's it's got uh, it's caught the frost and it's starting to die back. But um, there is a big pumpkin in there, and I don't want to cause cut something off here which uh, might affect it down there. The same with the path it's growing along the path. I don't want to be messing about with that. So um the, the the main thing what we want to do is to get inside here by the way it's blowing a hula we've got a we've got a storm moving in look at the bloody roof there i've actually took the sheet off it, it looks better doesn't it i was thinking of doing the rest of it i might have to do that after tomorrow um when the after this storm hits the place because it's probably just tear it to shreds anyway but that's the job which we're going to be getting getting on within a few weeks time hopefully Maybe a new roof uh, sort of sorted for that. Um, I'm going to leave the old roof on, but I'm going to put something over the top of it just to, to protect it. Right, anyway, back to this. This is what we're going to be having a go at. So I'm going to get me bits and bobs and then we're going to get cracking. So uh, this is what it looks like at the moment. I'll show you what it looks like after we've finished. So these are the tools we're going to be using. That hole, this rake, blood fishing bone, um, this is uh, lime, there's my gloves, there's my bag. So we're gonna get in here now. And we're gonna, first we're gonna take the, um, the spinach out, then we're gonna pull everything else out. Some of the centers of that um, Japanese, um, I forget what it's called now, Kama Summer or other. We're gonna give the chickens Maybe the tops off the um, Brussels sprouts. We'll give the chickens the rest of it. It's all going in that bag, so let's get stuck in. <laughs> As you can see, we've got no club root, but they've done really poorly. Thing is, something actually got into the cage, and uh, well, it's been it's decimated a lot of the a lot of the stuff. But the good news is no club root, so we'll continue bagging this up. But I thought I'd show you that just to, to prove my point. Nothing wrong with the roots, that's, that's, that's good. So let's crack on and get the rest of it sorted. So guys, this is why the brassicas have suffered this um, larvae here, absolute horrible little thing, I forget the name of it now, I will put the name up in a moment for you to see, but uh, they damage the roots and that's what causes a lot of the problem in the, in the bed. So uh, not only have I I'm going to give it a good owing, put all the fertilizers in. Uh, I'm going to have to really, really check through the soil, make sure we got out all these buggers out because they, they absolutely cause havoc. Um, what they do, they, they cut round the, um, the bottom of the plant can cause it stress and what have you but that's a bugger that there is the one the thing which is causing the problems chickens are going to eat that along with some food i've got there 
Right, I'm just going to get the hoe in there, hoe it all, level it out, and we'll get the uh, fertilizers in. First things first, let's go. And, I'm going to give these all these um, tops of the uh, the Brussels sprouts to the chickens. Well, I think the chickens are going to enjoy this, the tops. Absolute shame, but chickens are going to benefit from it. Well guys, I'm just going to spread the, uh, the blood fish and bone and lime into this bed now. Well, I've got more bloody lime on me than i got in there. Oh well, there's a three minute warning. The missiles are incoming. I'm wondering whether I should bother doing any more now, knowing that. Actually, that's 11 o'clock at the key, on, on the docks at. Every morning the, you hear them air raid sirens at 11 o'clock, so don't worry, it's not the end of the world. really thinking about owing it in guys now because this wind's very strong it might blow it all away so I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't so I'm gonna I'm gonna rake it in I wasn't gonna but I am now <laughs> So, we've hold it in, we wasn't going to do, but the wind's so strong, all it would do is just blow away, so I decided best to hoe it in. So we've hold about four or five inches deep there, it might not look like I was digging deep, but trust me, this bed has got a really fine tilt on it, so it's all prepared for the next whatever we put in it and it probably will be some cabbages anyway as you can see it's very windy so we're going to lock everything up tidy it up and that's another job done for now but we've uh, got we've got some um we've got some spinach that's the main thing so it's uh it's been a good it's been a, a result chicken's got a few treats as well Right, so I'm going to move on. So like I say, we've got uh, rain heading this way, shortly. So, these are slug pellets. These, I've got buckets of these, this stuff. Not these particularly, this, ain't, this, is, an, this is an old, um, an old uh, bit Wilkinson's um, slug pellets. However, the, the pellets that are in here are, are from a, a sack of a 50 kilo sack of these so I just topped them up and that's what we're going to spread spread into this um, brassica cage now hopefully it'll take the last of the slugs out that's what we're after anyway so let's have at it
battery on all my cameras and uh, all I've got to do now is just put the netting on. We've added the um, slug pellets into there. I'm going to cover it all up, so let's have at it. So there we go folks, we've got the nets on, everything's um, covered, everything's uh, nothing can get in there now. So the slug pellets obviously take the slugs out. We've got the lime, we've got the blood fishing bone in there. Everything's out, there's not a single weed in there, it's uh, been old. Um, I put everything away. So we're going to leave this one now, this is a job done. Uh, the next job will be the pumpkin which is growing on top of the... Um, on top of the bed i will take care of that in due course i'm just waiting for the uh the pumpkin which is in the other bed to grow a little bit more oh it'd be coming out around about the 20 28 29th and um it'll be going on for the grandkids and then all the pumpkin will disappear then then we can get on with other jobs what we need to do right that's a, a job that I needed to do today. And we've got a big bag of um, spinach to take home as well. So that's the result. So we, we, didn't have, um, we didn't have club root, which was great. I mean, I was really happy that we haven't got the club root in there. We did have in that bed a, a few years ago, but we've managed to, um, to, to sort that out. And we haven't got it no more. However, them cutter beetles are the worst bloody things you could I could have in the bed the chickens loved them you didn't see me going in there I was, I was actually I was turning the soil over looking for them I ended up with an handful of them um, the chickens ate a lot of them but what they do the the they eat the roots and everything on your plants they live in the soil they come out as a and then bugger off and um, they cause all sorts of damage and that's what was um, causing the stress on the um, the Brussels sprouts and it happens but the chickens took care of them and if you've got them in your beds you know you've got to be careful because they will take the, the like a young um, cabbage or a broccoli or something like that they will take the, the, the main stem and they will eat it and they'll take it out uh, but they, what they do they, they, they target the roots and everything and that's how they get so fat and well that's what happened to me Brussels sprouts. So I didn't get no Brussels sprouts, which is very annoying, but at least they haven't got club root in the bed. I've got one more clip to show you, and that's that storm barber or berber or whatever it is. Um, I mean, I, I come down, it was blowing a hula. Obviously I had to come down every day to feed buttercup and do the chickens. And um, I noticed that Mark's greenhouse here, all the windows are blow, blown out. So, I was in two minds what to do. I thought, I can't get hold of him at the moment, and if I leave it too long, his, his, all his, his, his greenhouse is gonna be destroyed, it's brand new. So, I decided then to put the, the panels in. It was raining, so we've got a before, we've got an after video. However, you might be able to see from the back of me, Ed, um, what he did. He come down later on and well, you're going to see what he done in a bit. So let me show you what had happened and I'll show you what it looked like when I finished sorting it out. From it. Well, this sucks. I just just noticed Mark's um, panels have all blow, been blown out here. Um, th this panel is, I just pushed it back in a bit, but I want to try and get the glass, these plastic sheets in. However, um, it's going to need to be told, so I need to get hold of... Um, Mike to give him his number. I've got his number to ring, Mark. You see, so um, I'm in I'm in, in in trouble. Uh, uh, I, I can't let him know, and uh, if I leave it, his, his greenhouse is going to be destroyed, unfortunately. So I'll see what I can do here at the moment. But yeah, I'll see if I can get Mike to get hold of him and um, get him to come down. Well, I couldn't leave it, but I've put the glass in. I've managed to get the glass in, but he really, really needs to come, and he needs to do something with this. The panels will not hold. This wind will just tear this apart. Um, he needs to come down and uh, he needs to put glue 
all around the, the joints and do some air at the bottom because this is where it's it's blowing in the wind it's loose all this air at the bottom is all it's, it's just it's just not going to last 10 minutes on here this greenhouse unfortunately but um, i'm absolutely wet through now I'm probably going to end up with the flu um, I, I swore I wouldn't be doing any of this again, but here I am fixing greenhouses for people. Anyway, uh, I, to, I, to, I need to get hold of him now, hold of uh, Mark, and um, I haven't got his phone number, you see. And this wind, this will tear it out again, this will come out again to, tonight. This, um, if the wind gets any stronger, I mean, we've got 40 mile an hour gusts in the place. And this is just plastic. All it does is pushes in the middle and it just pops them out. It needs to be, these these panels need to be fixed in properly, unfortunately. Anyway, I'm going to get out this rain. I'm getting wet through. Well, uh, looks like Mark's been back. I put the two, the two panels in here and the panel in here. This was a nightmare putting this panel in. But uh, we managed to get them back in. Anyway, I managed to get in contact through, through the Facebook group. And uh, anyway, he's come down last night after work and he's um, clim filmed it. That works for now until he's got more time to, to sort the, um, the, the panels out. What he needs to do is to no nails and silicone in. It's that, that way it'll stop him from blowing out. But yeah, um, tragedy averted. If I would have left them where they were and then winds were so bad the other day, it would have just ripped this greenhouse to shreds. But uh, yeah, his polytunnels made it as well. So all's well that ends well. There you go. So he got lucky and um, he come down at that later on that day. I managed to get him through Facebook and tell him what had happened. He come down with a load of cling film and he's wrapped the cling film right round it to protect it. And he's it's got to be honest with you, he's done a good he's done a good job. It's actually doing the job. It's stopping the wind from blowing against the windows. Um, what he needs to do though, he knows what to do. Blob of glue in the corners and then silicon all the windows, every one of them. They're not it's it's the, the greenhouse is it's not been put together the way you know the way I would like it anyway. And where the windows are, there's only so much of the perspex either side. So you get a gust of wind hit it, it just pops them out. He knows that, and he, he got lucky there, he really did. I said I wasn't going to uh, be do, doing these sort of jobs, but I can't help myself, guys. I like to help anyone who needs it, and he definitely needed it there. Otherwise, he'd been looking for a brand new bloody greenhouse. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here now. I'm going to get the the video edited. I've always, I it just seems to every every um, Sunday night, I'm rushing to get the video up. Um, but uh, next week, the pumpkin will be coming out. We'll be taking the tops off the the dahlias and covering them up. And um, well, there's a few other jobs I'm sure you'll you'll see me doing as well. So that's it for now. I'm going to leave Buttercup here. She's like I say, she's probably fast asleep behind me now, all curled up. She's got a tea, she's got a water, she's got everything she needs. And um, what I need is a nice cup of coffee. So I'm going to head off and uh, get this video up a bit later. So, as always, thanks for watching. Stay safe and goodbye for now. Let's move out of the way and show you Buttercup. No, she's not asleep. She's cleaning herself. She end up with a fur ball. Oh well, she'll be getting a, she'll be getting a winter house put in there shortly. So I'll leave you with Buttercup. Goodbye for now.